todos.
uh, from dealing with consecration. And so this has turned into a three-part series. Um, several weeks ago, consecration service. The Lord revealed to me that if we are going to be consecrated for His glory, we must read the words of consecration in our own lives. And we read for ourselves, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy tender mercies. We read the words of consecration over our lives. And we even said, create in me, O God, a clean heart. And renewing us the right spirit. Anybody remember that yeah. consecration Sunday? Yeah. yeah, we ask God to consecrate us to do the work that God's called us to do. And then last week, consecration. What's next? What are we do? What do we do after consecration? I, I encourage people if you can come to church every Sunday because sometimes the messages will flow together. And, and I talk about what's next. We're consecrated. What's next? And the Lord led me to share with you Luke chapter 4, where Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he wanted me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken heart, to set at liberty those who are bruised, uh, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And I shared with you last week that we need to acknowledge our consecration. Acknowledge that. I said we need to accept challenges of our consecration and then to appreciate that we have been consecrated. And that was last week. And now this week, the Lord said there's more to this message. So consecration, what do I do? What do I say? There's a background to 
to, to Jeremiah's situation. And so God has revealed to me through this word to share with you when you want to know what to do and what to say. God has already, through his word, given us directions as to how to be obedient to the word of God. So I hear in this first chapter, beginning with verse number four, these words. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. What do I do? What shall I say? This passage of scripture lifts up some things that will help us understand what God is calling us to do. First thing I'm going to share with you is that you must remember that the Lord consecrated you. Yes. Stay with me here. You must remember that it was the Lord who consecrated you. It, it was not us just saying words. It was not just the putting on of the oil on your foreheads. That had to be something to happen within your life to let it be known that God has spoken to you. And I'm here to suggest that you need to remember that it was the Lord who consecrated you. How can you say that, Pastor? Well, look at the text. Then the word of the Lord came to me. God speaking to Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. You got to remember that it's the Lord who consecrated you. A lot of times we think that we can just ride on the umbrella or on the wave of being a church member. But if you call yourself a child of God, there ought to be something in your life, something in your mannerism, something that says, I know the Lord has laid his hands on me. There ought to be something that is evident that God is real. And, and when you walk in the, in the goodness of God, God Mrs. Uh, Pastor's wife, Mrs. Florence Stanley, 
were a part of the administration for the Congress, and, and, and they called me, somehow they got my name, and I was asked to serve as a lecturer. I was very honored. Before going to Baltimore, I contacted Dr. James. I said, Dr. James, I, I know what it means to lecture, but you're the president. I want you as president to tell me what it means to lecture in the Congress of Christian Education. Dr. James said to me, preach. You, you know the subject matter? You just preach it. I said, thank you, Dr. James. I, I just needed to know that. So here I am, this new guy, lecturing in the Congress. And I know I did what God called me to do. I, I prepared myself well, and, 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 I, and I, I did my lecture preaching, and I preached that God's Spirit moved in this place, in War, war Auditorium in, in, in Baltimore, and, and God moved in, in such a special way. And I did not know that they had supervisors to evaluate the lecturers. They had supervisors to evaluate all of the teachers that, and, and I preached and God just moved that after preaching, uh, this person came up to me, a brother from Mississippi, came up to me, but keep in mind the spirit was so high, I got hold of him, and he was happy. But after that he came up to me and told me that I did not do what I was assigned to do. And, and, and that just drained me. It drained me because I, I know I gave my best and, and, and I saw, uh, I had to talk to Sylvia. We're now leaving, I said, hey, this, this guy said, I didn't do what, I, I, I gave my best. And Sylvia said to me, just remember how you got here. It was the Lord who brought you here to be at this time in your life. And all I'm saying is that when you remember that you're consecrated, even when it gets rough, God will raise up somebody, hallelujah, to remind you that you've been touched by the master. I'm trying to help somebody here today. Don't you forget that God has touched your life. Remember what God has done for you. Oh, I had a good week. And I was so strong now in the faith that the day, uh, that Thursday, I guess it was, I had to address the situation because people were wondering how I got to be the lecturer. And I had to explain to those in the auditorium that the Lord got me here. There are some places you find yourself, people won't understand, but when the Lord has his hands in your life and on your life, you will go some places and do some things that other folk just won't be able to understand. And all I'm saying to you, if you say, I'm a child of God, you ought to remember that you have been consecrated. You ought to remember that the Lord has laid his hands on you. You ought to remember that God is doing a special work in your life. Are you all with me here? Huh? Are you all with me here? Don't you all take this consecration and play games with it. You say, consecrate me to that service, Lord, and if you're sincere about it, you for service. Yeah. Then there's something else out of this text. Not only do you are you encouraged to remember that the Lord has consecrated you, you need to remind yourself that God will give you the words to speak. Yeah. It is not, I gotta get this off my chest attitude. No, no, no. God will give you the words to speak. He'll give it to you at the time you are speaking. You may have to be quiet and be speaking. Or you may have to open your mouth and speak. But God will give you the words to speak. Remind yourself. Remind you that God will give you the words to speak. How is this supported in Scripture? Verse number 6, Jeremiah said, the Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth, 
for you shall go to all to whom I sent. Yeah, you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. When you are consecrated, God will give you the words to speak. Somebody prays too much with their faith and religion and prayer life. But I'm going to tell you that if you understand your consecration, God will give you the words to speak on your journey. God will speak for you. And all you have to do is open your mouth. And when God says, go, you will go. When God says, say, you will say. You've got to understand the power that you have. I'm just asking you to remind yourself that God will give you the words to speak. Don't be making excuses. Oh, I can't do this, Lord. Don't be making excuses. I, I don't know if I can. No, no, no. You say you're consecrated? God says you just go where I send you. And what I command you, speak. Are you with me? Yes. It's just really good lesson here. Now, remember the Lord's consecrated you. Secondly, remind yourself that God will give you the words to speak. Yes. Thirdly, retain in your mind. Meaning, don't forget. <laughs> retain in your mind. Don't forget this. That God is with you. God is with you. Now God knows where he's sending you. God knows what it is you are to say. You must retain in your mind that God is with you. Back in the scripture. Look at God talking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over nations and over kingdoms to, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. I am with you. Listen, don't forget that the journey that you're on, you're not by yourself. God is with you. Ashley, I know that mom is sick, but God is with you. Don't worry about what others may say. You just remember retaining your mind that no matter how difficult it may be, God is with you. I'm trying to help somebody in the day. Jesus, and let him to Calvary. And let him to Calvary. 
Paul thought that he was being blasphemous. He spoke the words because he had to speak the words of God. And, and lo and behold, it led him to a place called Calvary. And, and the word of God was so much in Jesus that even when it was rough, he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? All he did was quote Psalm 22. Why have you forsaken me? And then when he died, he said, into thy hands I commit my spirit. He spoke the words of the psalmist once again. I'm trying to help somebody. You know, you know you need the word of God. You got to put the word of God in your heart. You got to bless God with the word of God and recognize that when you have God in you, God can use you. I hear Jesus saying, into thy hand I commit my spirit. I look at Jesus on the cross and he dies on the cross and I, I look at Jesus being placed in the grave in that borrowed tomb but the Bible tells me that was earth on a Sunday morning that God raised Jesus up from the dead with all power in his hand. I'm trying to help somebody today because somebody needs to know that God is with you. Somebody needs to know that God will with, is with you every step of the way. Somebody needs to know that God
Jesus. If Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. If Jesus goes with me, I'll go. It's heaven to me wherever I be. If he is there, I count it, I count it, I count it a privilege, his cross to bear. If Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. Is there anybody here that's willing to sing for the master? Is there anybody here that will pray for the master? Is there anybody here that will teach for the master? In Jesus, I said in Jesus, in Jesus. In Jesus.
and he's a witness that God's word is true. You see, he, he has some experiences that I've yet to face in my life. I recognize him as an elder in the church. I'm trying to do my part to help him. But I'm asking that a voice that's been on this journey for a while to give us this prayer today. Brother Mac Wilson. Lord Jesus. I, I just love to call this name. Jesus. Jesus. Whatever we're going through, I want you to know he's by your side. I'm a living witness that he's kept me. He brought me through storms, danger, evil talking, criticism, the Lord has been with me. And I know he's with you. But you have to reach out and touch it. And tell him what's on your mind. Whether it be in your closet or in your car. Talk to the Lord and tell him what you want. Talk to him. Just tell him that you need him more than you need anything else in the world. You don't need your car to praise him. You don't need the bank account to say, I'm this or that. But knowing that the Lord brought you through. Yes, sir. And everything that you own or that you have belongs to the Lord. Yes, sir. For the earth is the Lord. Yes, sir. And the fullness they are. Yes, and may that dwell there within. Yes. Knowing that God is over you and protecting you for everything that you for the Lord that we serve is answering our prayers yes. right now. Whatever's bothering you, tell them about it. Tell them about the problems of your children, your family members, those that you don't speak to. Tell them God to give you a new heart. You've been consecrated, now you have a new heart. So tell them about it. And He will answer your prayer. Now, Lord, we come before you now to thank you for protecting us through the stormy weather, through the things that we have and don't have. But Lord, thank you for the confident clothes on our backs, shoes on our feet. Lord, we just want to thank you for food in our shelter. Lord, thank you so much. We love you, Lord, that we came to this house. Now, Lord, I'm asking that you bless this congregation. Bless Pastor Jane. Bless all the members of this congregation. And then, Lord, thank you for seven years of the wooden call and sound. Lord, we want to say thank you for the music when we hear them sound. Lord, we just want to give you praise. We want to just say thank you. And if we had 10,000 tongues, Lord, it wouldn't be enough. But Lord, we say right now, thank you. And that you'll bless every member in this congregation. In Jesus' name we 